you guys need to get involved in ministry to that degree? No, that doesn't mean that. What that means is you should find out what God put you here for. See, you should find out what your purpose is and do that. The reason we're in ministry like that is because our purpose involves us being in ministry. And so the most fulfilling life that you can live is to know what you're here for. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. See, what did he put you here for? So I, I'm going to open up in prayer real quick. And um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your word on today. We thank you for the, the, the people that you have graced us, Lord God, to speak your word in this sphere of influence, Lord God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for using our minds to think today. Using our vocal cords to speak today. Yes. Father, let your word fall on good ground. We, we bind in every demonic force, every satanic force, and we say that you are powerless in this atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We take control of the atmosphere and we say that every word that is going to be spoken will produce fruit. Yes. And it will accomplish that which you have sent it for to accomplish. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, to start out, to start out um, our, our discussion, and I know this is a teaching church because I know my brother. So I, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm, I'm one of those interactive kind of teachers. My my call is teaching. I know that. So I, I'm not going to hoop. Now he's gifted. He can do both. He can he can hoop with the best of them, and he can teach flat footed like Dr. Ron Collins. He know what I'm talking about. So he's gifted. He can do both. But my gift is teaching. Okay. And and as a teacher, I have to I have to grab your attention. I have to captivate your mind, okay? And I have to bring your mind in and I, and, and 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 inspire you to think because God gave you a mind to think, okay? He gave us He gave us the ability to think because He knew we would need it, okay? All right, okay. So so one of the things I want to do is I want you to, to, to lay aside every distraction. Lay aside every distraction. Because first of all, watch this, watch this. It's only the things that, that's important that you give your attention to. Right, right. It's just like if you're cooking a meal for somebody important, come on ladies, come on, I need a witness. If you're cooking a, a meal that's for someone that's important, that you've been waiting, who can, who can literally make one decision and change the whole course of your life, how distracted are you? You take the kids, you set them aside, you set them to the babysitter, you might put a, you know, you turn the phone off, you say, this meal is going to be the way it needs to be, right? Yeah. Right? How many of us been? Man, we finally got that call. We finally got it. I mean, we've been waiting 10 years for it. Now we got it. You understand? Now we finna clean it up. How easy we are distracted. We gonna check every little crack, every little crevice, okay? And those are things that you that that don't really they don't really matter with respect to the things of God. When you read Matthew the 13th chapter, he talks about the parable. Of the so one of the one of the grounds is that you don't understand. The word miss you. You know, you were talking to you were talking to your homegirl, you were talking to your homeboy, you were playing with the, the little baby, goo goo ga ga, and the word went right by you. And the Bible describes that as the evil one stealing the word from you. Jesus. Okay? If God's word is how you live, how much can you afford to miss it? All right, all right. All right. Come on now, come on. This is a word church. Right. This is a word church. I know, I know the man got him over this church. This is a word church. Okay. So if the word is how you live your life, how much can you afford to miss? All right. All right. Okay. So first thing, first thing, I want to declare to you, I, I, I want to declare to you that your attention will be here. Say, say, Pastor Jackson, you got my attention. Pastor Come on. Jackson, you got my attention. Say, God, 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 through Pastor Jackson has my attention. God, through Pastor Jackson has my attention. All right. Okay. All right. Now, how many of us, how many of us, uh, this is a teaching church, so I don't have to spend too much time on this. How many of us recognize the fact that we were made sinners? Come on, let me see a show of hands. 
Mm -hmm. We were made. It wasn't nothing we did. Mm -hmm. Wasn't nothing we did, right? All right. All right. We, All right. We, we inherited from Adam, right? All right? Okay, so so in order for us to inherit it from Adam, God had to put that in place, right? You can't inherit nothing that God declares you not to be able to inherit. Right. So if God declared you a sinner and you inherited that from Adam, it was God who made you a sinner. The Bible says in Romans 5, 12, through 21, if you read that, you read that in your, 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 your spare time, just write it down. Romans 5, 12 through 21. Read that in your spare time. That's not a part. It's a part of the teaching, but it's, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't decide to use it in the actual teaching because we're just going to make a reference to it. Okay. So God declared you to be a sinner, right? Okay. Declared you, right? So now, let's see. Let's see. Say, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Say, I'm thinking. Say, I'm thinking. Okay. So if God declared you to be a sinner, how many of us in here can prove it wrong? Amen. You mean no, nobody can prove it wrong? Right? Now think about this. With all the things that's going on in Washington, D.C., we understand the gay marriage being passed. We understand, you know, these, these shootings, these kids, like what you talked about. Okay. So if these people are sinners, what do we expect from them? Huh? We expect them to prove God right, right? God declared them to be a sinner. We expect for them to sin, right? 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 So, so, so first and foremost, unless he has declared them to be something other than sinners, we expect them to sin. Come on, can I get a witness? Amen. We expect them to be sinners, right? All right. Right? right? Okay, all right, that's now that we've, we've done this. Okay, now, the, the title of the message today is, and, and, and God spoke this vividly on the way here, several times, righteousness from faith to faith, okay? Righteousness from faith to faith. Mm -hmm. Now, those of us who are Bible scholars and read have read the Bible, you know, we automatically get a, an image of what that means in our mind. But see, sometimes we have to upgrade our image of God. Yeah. All right. That's right. Sometimes we have to hear the Holy Spirit say something and be able to be open-minded enough to be able to receive it. Amen. Okay? Now, Initially, when I was introduced to this passage of scripture, when I read it, I understood it to be, we grow from faith to faith. Right? Right? How many, how many of us understood it like that? Okay. But in actuality, what actuality is, he is talking about from, a, from an aspect of faith to a different aspect of faith. Okay? It's one, one aspect of faith that we were at. He has brought us to another aspect of faith that we are in right now. Amen. Okay? Now, if I can, let me see. All right, all right. Righteousness from faith to faith. Turn your Bibles. If you have your Bibles, go to Romans, the first chapter, 17 verse. And if you don't, we have it on the screen for you. Okay? Now, remember, righteousness from faith to faith, right? Righteousness from faith to faith. Because we know that at one point in time we were declared sinners just as those, the Bible says, who are what? Who are in the world, right? So we expect them to sin, but we have to recognize our identity, as Pastor said earlier. We, He said, I know who I am, and you need to know who you are. So we need to know who we are. This is an identity message, okay? This is for us to be able to walk away from here today and say, I'm the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. I'm the righteousness of God. God waiting to hear me pray. Huh? Huh? Okay. It says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay. Now, I took the liberty to add the, uh, the, the, the reference that it's making in the, in the B part of the verse right here where it says, the just shall live by faith. It's making a reference to this verse in Habakkuk. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's recording it, so to speak. Right. 
Okay? And it says, and it says, it says, For the vision is yet for a point in time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, and it will not tarry. Now, this verse here is usually connected to one of those quotes that say, Write the vision down, make it plain. Mm -hmm. So those who see it may run with it. So in, so in other words, that verse is connected to purpose. This verse right here is connected to purpose. It says when, you, when, when God shows you your purpose, when God shows you your vision, just as a uh, pastor and uh, uh, first lady asked you, when he showed them the vision, the instructions per the context of this verse says, write it down, make it plain, so those who can, I send to connect with you right. can see what I've called you to do and they can see themselves in there mm -hmm. and know where they fit in. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So identity right. is going to cause you to see yourself all right. where you fit in right. and then you can take off with it. Okay? All right. Now, all right. So now, this part of the verse here is where the connection is. It says, Behold, the soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. See that? Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. That's a pride verse. Uh -huh. See? See, your soul is lifted up, mind one of the emotions. It's high minded. You're high minded. Right. It's not upright in you. Right. Okay? High mindedness is not upright. Every, let every man think himself what? Think soberly of himself. No. Let, let every man, um, uh, Think soberly, have a, have a, have a, let no man think more highly of himself than he ought to think. That's what it said. It says, let no man think more highly of himself than he ought to think. Well, this, this joker here, he tripping. Come on, say he tripping. He tripping. All right, okay. So now, but the just shall live by his faith. See that? See that? It's a little, it's a little different. See, this says the just shall live by faith. This says the just shall live by his faith. Uh -huh. right? Yeah. right? Right? Okay. Now, when you look at this, when you look at this, it really, if you just kind of glance at it, it really don't look like it's different. Right? Yeah. Right? Right, right? Right? But you have to understand that this is making a reference. This was quoted long before this even came about. So this is making a reference to this. Uh -huh. One thing, and even as even as long ago as when we first did the first conference he and I did together, mm -hmm. one of the things I can remember, the message that I taught was the difference between the Hebrew people and the Gentile people. The Hebrew people understood the Old Testament because their lives revolved around God. So they didn't have to say faith in God. They understood when, he, when you talked about faith, it automatically meant faith in God. Right. See? They understood that. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like two mechanics talking together. They don't have to talk about every little detail. They can just talk among themselves and they know what they're talking about. You and I, they talk to us, we'd be like, okay, what you talking about? <laughs> right. You understand what I'm saying? So, so so the point I'm trying to make is that the Hebrew people, when you read the Old Testament, and you read some aspects of the New Testament, you have to interject biblical faith. See? Because you have to know that it's talking about faith in God and not just faith in general. Because faith is just a word. And it's not the word that they use because they use Hebrew and they use Greek and they use Aramaic. So the word faith is used to be able to what? Articulate the intent that's being passed to us in a way that we can understand. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Huh? All right. All right. I, I'm not losing nobody. Else. Okay, y'all right there with. Okay. All right. So faith, in this sense, his faith is a verb. In other words, his faith, what he is expressing. Now it can also mean an adjective with respect to the faith. You know, Christianity is the faith, right? Yeah, right. 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 But in this sense, it's talking about what this guy is doing. So we know it's a verb, right? Right? Now, the just shall live by faith, 
is also a verb. Right? Amen. So we can make the correlation between the two. The correlation between the two is the just shall live by whatever faith means. Okay? Right? This guy at the bottom, his soul is lifted up in him, and because his soul is lifted up in him, what he, what he is believing, he is going to express, and what he is expressing is considered to be his faith. All right? I hope y'all with me now, because y'all quiet. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Come on. I, I was, somebody said he was born to do this. All right. Okay. All right. Now. In in um in in the next aspect of this verse, let me let me let me tie this together a little differently. Okay. Now, um, a little differently. Notice at the top. See the game changer. What are you believing? Now the game changer is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Period. Amen. Period. He changed the he changed the game for the human experience. He came and through one act of sacrificial to, on the cross, he changed the whole demise of the human experience. Through one act, he changed everything. Okay? He changed that. How, how, can I get a witness? He changed everything. So, so watch this. The game changer wants to know what are you believing? Okay? So what are you believing? What are you believing? Are you believing that he changed the game? Or are you believing that you might need to help him change your game? Okay? Okay? Alright, now. Let's go, let's go to Romans 3, 29 through 31. If you have your Bible, once again, go there. If you don't, we have provided it for, provided it for you on the screen. Okay. Now, remember, we talked about the expression of faith. This one guy who's full of pride, and what we see him doing because he's full of pride, we can say, okay, what he's doing is an expression of his faith. But he's full of pride. Okay, remember that now. He was full of pride. Now, is he a God of Jews only? He is also the God of the Gentiles. Yes, the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God, see that? Yeah. Which justified the circumcision by faith and the and circumcision through faith. Justified the circumcision, it should be the uncircumcision. No, that's right. Right. It should be, and I'm, I'm not sure how the copy, oh, maybe the copy piece changed change it around. But seeing one God which, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. That's what it should say. Okay? Amen. That's what it should say. That's what it's saying in your Bible, right? Okay, now, so now, what we, the point we're trying to make here is remember, righteousness from faith to faith, okay? From faith to faith. Now, the circumcision, the reason why it's by faith is because it's by what they did. See, the circumcision lived by the law, see? And so they were justified by the ability to follow the law. Okay? By faith. You, you read Hebrews 11 chapter? It's, it's got a list of Old Testament uh, 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 what they call heroes or examples of faith. And it said, by faith, Abraham. By faith, such and such. By faith. Okay, now. By faith means that, guess what? By what they expressed, they were righteous. Hallelujah. Right? By what they did, they were righteous. Right? Okay. They obeyed the law. And God, what? God, uh, come on, help me out. They obeyed the law, and that was their righteousness. See, obeying the law was their righteousness. But one thing we have to recognize is this. This is, this is a revelation that if you get it, it'll change your whole perspective on, on, on the whole law grace thing, okay? If you get it, it'll change your whole perspective. First and foremost, let's understand something about the law. First of all, Abraham, uh -huh. Abraham, and I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I won't even go there. Watch this. The law was put there as a, guess what? As an aspect of grace. See, 
It was God's grace. You want me to tell you how you know? Because nobody could follow it. Okay? Nobody could perfect it. So how would God give you something that he knew nobody could do and not give you grace because he knew you couldn't fulfill it? See, when you think about what you have now, it's the same thing. Oh, it's quiet. All right. All right. Let's go on a little further. Let's go on a little further. All right. All right. Now, watch this. Go to Romans 10 and 1. And we're just gonna we're just gonna focus on because for, for, for time's sake, we're gonna focus in on the third verse. Okay? Third verse. It says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to unto the righteousness of God. For the for Christ is the end of the law yes. for righteousness. To everyone that believes. Okay. Okay, watch this. Watch this. What verse 4 is saying mm -hmm. is this is that you can no longer be righteous by following the law. That's right. right. That's mm -hmm. right. Faith to faith is what that is talking about. Mm -hmm. It's saying that through the expression of your obedience to the law, you had righteousness. But now the righteousness of God is being revealed from the faith that you had by following or the expression that you gave by following the law yeah. to now the expression that you give from trusting in Christ. Hallelujah. See, that's a faith. And the, and the faith that you had or the faith that you expressed by following the law is another faith. All right. The faith that you have by trusting in Christ is another faith. All right. So the faith to faith is, is two descriptions of how righteousness comes. Because the verse says, for the righteousness of God is being revealed from one faith to another faith. Come on, come on, come on, come on with me now. Come on with me now. All right, let's go, let's go a little bit deeper. Right. Okay, now, um, hmm. mm. see that? I just want one of these. Okay, now, wait a minute. I'm out of form. All right, right here. All right, now, their faith in the law, and, and I'm using it, their, their expression in the law. Trust me, I'm setting you up like a mother. Say that. Say, setting us up like a mother. Like All right. right. Watch this. Right. Their expression of faith. Because, see, faith is an expression. Unless you're talking about it with respect to a description of the Christian uh, religion or the Christian-based belief system. Okay? So, so faith is an expression. See? So, so now watch this. So, understand this. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness, right? Okay? Uh -huh. Okay? Even as Abraham, now Galatians 3 and 6 says the same thing. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Uh -huh. Now, so watch this. Watch this. So believing God made Abraham righteous. Uh -huh. Right? Amen. Right? Now, there's another scripture that says, how many of us remember this? Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Right? Amen. So where was Abraham in the midst of Adam and Moses? Huh? Right there in the middle, right? Right? Right, that's the man that read the Bible. All right, all right, watch this. So Abraham was right there in the middle, right? So now watch this. How did death reign from Adam to Moses? It ain't deep. Everybody died. They didn't have no opportunity and nothing else. Okay? That's real simple, right? Right? That reigned from Adam to Moses. But when it makes that statement, it's letting us know sometimes the law is called the law of Moses, right? So until the institution of the law, you had no chance at anything other than death. Okay? 
The only thing you had was that. Okay? Thank you. Amen. Now watch this. So, at the institution of the law, now you had a choice. Come on, Deuteronomy 30. I hear Deuteronomy 30 saying, I present to you this day life or death. Come on. Right. Choose life. Okay? Right? So now we had another choice. Right? So we could choose from death to life. So now death didn't reign. See? See? Man. Oh, that's cool. God. Okay, watch this. So, because the law was introduced, you now had an opportunity at something different. But remember, we just said that the law nobody could obey. So, what you mean? It gave us a different choice. Because really, it was a setup for us to fail. We couldn't obey. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. So, even with the law, because we couldn't obey, we didn't have another chance. Come on. Right? Uh, right? Because, I mean, what did the law do? The law, didn't, the, the law really was just a way for us to. And when we read one scripture, another scripture, it was just a, a, a way for us to see the spiritual principle that was in us that was in effect. Because we couldn't see sin. Right. Not sin, the verb. We couldn't see sin, the noun. See, sin, the noun is a vital principle or force that's producing the action. See? Okay? It's, it's what's producing the action. When the Bible says Jesus died, when, when we go to, we go, we're about to go to uh, 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 1 Corinthians 5, 17, where it says, God made him sin who knew no sin. My Lord. God made him sin the noun mm. who knew no sin, the verb, All right. so we could be the righteousness of God. All right. Okay? So now watch this. Watch this. So sin, the noun, we couldn't see it without the law. Uh -huh. See? Huh? Man, right. We couldn't, well, right? Watch this. Okay. I got you. Okay. 